All right, we're gonna do a brief rundown, or as brief as I can manage, rundown of the cameras <laughs> to give you guys an idea of the stupidity and breadth of my collection. And we're gonna go chronologically, uh, no, autobiographically for the purposes of this. I'm gonna run you through where I started and where I got to and how I got to where I got. So without any further ado, here we go. Camera number one was this guy back here, which was bought by my parents um, just before they had me, their first child, um, in, let's say, the late 70s, mid-late 70s. This is a Konica Auto Reflex TC. It is a 35 millimeter uh, SLR. Uh, this one has seen quite a bit of wear. There were two of these bodies. I think my sister has the other, I think. Um, and this one has the very desirable, still, 40 millimeter by 1.8 pancake lens on it. Look at that little thing. It's tiny, it's sharp as a tack, it's fast as all get out, it's a jewel of a lens. Um, these cameras, if you're not familiar with Konica's, Konica's SLRs from back in the day um, are neat in that they are um, shutter priority. So uh, the scale inside shows you the current f-stop, uh, the auto f-stop on it, and you adjust your shutter speed based on what you like in there, which is kind of neat. Uh, this one has seen better days. I think it had a light leak that I have fixed. I resealed it at one point or another. Um, this still shoots. Uh, it's a little tricky to get batteries for all these old cameras because they used to run on these mercury batteries that you just, they don't really exist anymore. Um, and you can sometimes run them on hearing aid batteries, but they get, the metering can get a little iffy on those. Anyway, um, so that's what we started with. That's what I started with. That's the camera I took my very first picture ever on. And so I wanted to, at some point or another, um, have its big brother. So this, <coughs> this is a Konica Auto Reflex T3, and this is actually the T3N, which is an unlabeled late variant on it. Um, and this is the big, it's obviously not a Nikon, uh, this is the big battleship of these things. Uh, so this is, this was like their all metal, heavy duty, like beefy beyond beefy, uh, like just a delightful, delightful machine. The winding on this thing, forward and film rewind on this, is just silky, silky smooth. Um, but it's still the same thing. You set your, um, you set your shutter speed, and it auto calibrates uh, f-stop for you. Uh, the only drawback to using this camera in contemporary times, besides the battery issue, which plagues all cameras of this era, um, is actually the um, the um, the weight. This thing is a tank. It, I can't even. T it's hurting my fingers and my wrist to hold this camera up. It is incredibly heavy. Again, it. This is meant as a pro camera that would take a serious, serious knocking about. Um, and the uh, the Konica optics back in the day were among the best you could possibly get. Super, 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 super good optics. Uh, I should. I will hasten to add that that is not a Konica lens that is on that camera, as a third-party lens. Anyway, so those were sort of. This was my beginning of 35 millimeter land, um, and then eventually I ended up. My family turned into a Nikon family after having started a Konica family because Konica was no more. More on that in a second. Uh, and I ended up with this as a hand-me-down from my mother. This is a Nikon N8008S, so the later variant on an 8008. Um, it is a. Nikon SLR, it is a delightful autofocus camera to use. Um, I think this was a prosumer camera. Um, the impression I have is that uh, quite a few pros used to use this as a backup camera body. It is not super heavy, um, but it is very durable. It's got that great look to it. Um, it's of that era where they had the, like, the nice red stripe on there. Um, but these things are absolutely delightful. The lens that I have on here is the super useful 35 to 135. Not wildly fast and not flat, uh, but it'll do macro, which is nice. Um, this thing, this, as you'll see, it, it, this will shape my later decisions with cameras. This lens is all metal and is a beast to shoot with. It is just heavy and, and just robust. Um, the downside with this thing is it has a, uh, this is Plague's lens of this style and this focal length, has a minimum focal distance of, uh, of about uh, five feet, which is not great if you're shooting indoors with kids, 
which as a dad, I do a fair bit. So, um, so it's a wonderful lens, wonderful focal length. It's heavy, it's very big, um, and it has uh, an issue with close focusing. But that was my first sort of like serious uh, 35 millimeter camera. Um, now you'll notice between that Nikon and the Konica that I've got sitting back there, um, those are two fairly heavy setups. And I remember fondly the, uh, the earlier Konica with that nice tiny little uh, pancake lens on it. So I always wanted something really small. And right around that time, uh, digital cameras were starting to happen. And I got as a present, um, this might have actually been my very first Nikon. This is a Nikon Coolpix 4200. This is my first digital camera. Uh, I want to point out that that is four megapixels. Ooh, doggy. Uh, it's got, uh, as is typical of this era, the world's tiniest LCD screen on the back. Um, it has a optical viewfinder sort of through there. Um, and this camera still shoots, it still works. It takes insufficient light, takes totally reasonable four megapixel camera uh, pictures, which is kind of amusing given uh, today's standards. I would also hasten to point out it has a uh, video setup here that I think is 15 frames per second. And I think the resolution on it is half of SD. So, uh, 320 by 240, I think, which is quaint, let's say. So I got in this, this uh, digital camera. Um, after that, uh, I was approaching the time of my life where I was going to have my first kid. Uh, and much like my parents getting their first sort of serious looking camera before they had their first kid, I got my first serious digital camera before I had my first kid. This is, it's all uh, taped off here. This is a Nikon and this is a D40, which was a entry level DSLR. Um, and it is tiny. This is not mirrorless. This is a full blown DSLR. It has a mirror that flips up and everything. Um, it will not shoot video at all. It was not an option on cameras of this era, era basically even a little bit. Um, but this camera, got put through its paces and is now retired. And the reason it's retired, uh, it will still power up if I throw a battery in it, but the shutter is hooped. It has just been worn out. It's got, I think, 80,000 shots that went through it. And so this thing is just worn out. So that needed a replacement at some point. Um, and so the most fitting replacement I could find was this. This is a uh, Nikon, again, you see a trend here. Uh, this is a Nikon, uh, it's masked off as well. This is a D5300, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny little DSLR. It's, I mean, you can see the grip. First of all, the grip is wonderful on this thing. It holds my hand beautifully. Um, lovely grip on the thing, uh, much newer, um, has some lovely features like a flip out screen, right? Like this is a, a fairly modern DSLR. It's not current by any standards, but it's fairly modern. Um, and this guy is what I still use. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of shots on it. It shoots video as well. I use it for that quite a lot. The lens of choice for this is a 35, the DX, because these are all ASPC censored cameras. Uh, so this is a DX lens, which is built for crop. It's a 35 millimeter. That makes it the equivalent in terms of field of view of a 50 millimeter. Um, and it's a 1.8, so it's fairly quick, which is nice. Um, and this lens, if you pull the, the guard off it, Nikon doesn't make a um, pancake lens. They have never made a pancake lens. This is as close to a pancake lens as you get with a Nikon. Um, and so it's like this nice compact package. It's delightful, it's very crisp, it's very fast. This body is incredibly light for what it is. That lens is incredibly light. So this is a relatively easy camera to haul around with you all day, which is great because when you're hauling around with kids, you're hauling around with a bunch of other stuff as well. So weight really matters. So in my scheme of going lighter and lighter and lighter, I started looking at, and I also had a throwback to film cameras here. I started looking at um, small viewfinder cameras, 35 millimeter film viewfinder cameras. So I found, this is just dumb luck, a, uh, that is a Canon, that is a Canonette QL17. Here, we'll flip that around so you can read it. QL17, if you're not familiar, these are fixed lens viewfinders from back in the day. It's a true viewfinder. So if you look through that, you'll actually get uh, focus and, and 
all that sort of business. Um, uh, shoots 35 millimeters, has a fixed lens on the front and is fully manual. So uh, I focus with this ring here. You've got f-stop control with this ring here. You've got ASA control here, and then you've got shutter control here. So this is a fully manual camera. It is small, it is light, it has delightful optics. Uh, this one works, which is nice, and I got it in a thrift shop for a song because these are actual real cameras that are still desirable. That's a QL17 means that you have a minimum f-stop of 1.7, so that's a quick piece of glass on the front of this. Um, and that's light, delightful, it's, a, it's been a lovely little camera, but as you can see here, it's still larger than that tiny little Nikon I used to lug with me everywhere, right? Um, I found this around the same time. This is a, uh, this came out of a school, I think, used as a document camera. So it's sort of pre-scanner. You used to take film shots of your documents. Uh, and this is an Instamatic X35 from Kodak. Um, this camera, uh, used to have a battery in it. Um, it is not really a viewfinder, sort of a viewfinder, kind of. Um, here's your focusing choices. I get that closer. Beyond six feet, two to six feet. So this, this is, and this shoots um, 126 film. 126 film, if you're unfamiliar, and you very likely are, um, is 35 millimeter film, but with a different aspect ratio and preloaded into a cartridge. So instead of a spool of film that you stretch across here and then it rewinds and all that sort of business, there's a cartridge and you just, you open the back of the camera um, and I think, like, uh, uh, you open the back of the camera, the whole cartridge goes in, you close the back of the camera, you cock the thing and you're done. That's your shutter release here and this is your film advance. That's it, super, super, super simple, fully automatic. This film is extinct. Uh, as it happens, I have a stash of it that's all expired, but that could be fun in its own right. Um, it is possible, if you're really careful, to cut open a 126 cartridge and reload it with modern 35 millimeter film if you're really into that. I haven't gone down that road. I don't have that sort of time right now, but it's a hilarious camera. It is completely plastic. This is like what a cheap tourist would have used back in the day who didn't know anything about photography, didn't care about photography, but just wanted to be able to take some snapshots, literal snapshots of their vacation. Um, this came into my possession. This is uh, another Konica, a bit of a throwback. You can tell I sort of get attached to stuff like this. This is a Konica C35. This is not the version of this camera that I sort of really wanted. The version I really wanted um, was a, um, is an Auto S3, which is kind of like that Canonette in that it's a fully manual, full-featured 35 millimeter camera. This is a 35 millimeter camera, but it's got a bunch of automatic functions to it, so you have sort of limited control with it. Film advance, shutter release, rewind. It's got a hot shoe on the top, which is kind of hilarious. Um, again, takes the same batteries that are, you cannot get anymore. Manual focus on this thing. Um, this has a Hexanon lens at 38 millimeters, so it's a little bit wide uh, for a walking around lens, um, 2.8, and then you set your film speed here. You've got some focus control here. This one's quite stiff. You've got focus control here. You have, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's lovely. It's tiny. I wish I had the fancy version of it, but those uh, in black, those are trading for serious money these days. So that's just not gonna happen. Um, so in my never ending pursuit of finding small, lovely cameras, um, that has led me to, and I've discussed this one briefly in another video, this guy. This is a Canon uh, EOS M. This is the original EOS M. This is a mirrorless, uh, excuse me, a mirrorless ASPC sensor camera. Touchscreen on the back, um, shooting modes up here. Um, this is a 22 millimeter prime um, uh, with a two f stop of two on it. So it's a fast lens. It's 22 millimeters. It's fairly wide with the crop factor on that. That puts it at sort of kind of 34, 35 millimeters of field of view equivalent. Um, and you'll notice it's got this lovely dial here. This is you know, like dumb mode, which is lovely. 
um, still frame mode, video mode. I mostly use this camera for video. I'm going to do a subsequent video down the road about the film, the video setup for this camera because it is sort of special and odd. Um, but for walking around, this is a lovely, this camera has the same size sensor in it as this bigger Nikon. Um, and it's a much smaller, lighter package and much easier to pocket with me. So um, while this is an older camera, um, and I don't use it for stills a lot, occasionally for walking around, uh, this mostly gets used for video. It shoots 1080, which is nice, and it shoots 1080 um, uh, with uh, a really flat color profile and some oversampling and some other bits and bobs. Again, I'll talk about all that in another video. But this is a delightful little camera for shooting. And then last but not least, again, as a null point of all things tiny, this is a GoPro Hero Session 5. So this is a discontinued camera at this point, I gather. Um, and these, I don't know if you've ever played with one, um, these sessions are actually really kind of lovely because they're tiny. They're, you know, an inch and a quarter cubes. There is no case to go underwater with it. Uh, you need a, a, a bracket to mount the thing to anything. Um, but if I just press this button, it will start recording in whatever mode I've put it in for video. And then there's a second button here that lets you use this microscopic screen to scroll through things if you want. It's much easier, frankly, to fire up an iPhone app and uh, set this thing up the way you want with that. But this is my tiny, tiny, tiny little camera that gets lugged with me um, when I'm riding or uh, vacationing or whatever, any place rough and tumble where I'm worried about carrying something fancier and or having weight or bulk with me, this is the jam. Um, uh, not afraid to, to put it through the ringer and it will be totally fine. Anyway, that is the longer than I thought, but still fairly brief history of the collection of cameras that live here with me. This doesn't touch the lenses or any of the other shooting accoutrement that go with this, but I can't, this will be three hours long if I do all that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe.